We got the new Apple TV device here and also I have last year's offering alongside it and even the original Apple TV as I have been a big fan of this device from the start. Not much difference on the design, but the newer version is much lighter due to no fans inside, which also leads to a 30% more power save. The TV branding on the outside is also gone now with this new version, but on the inside, we now have the A15 chip. That's the same chip included in iPad minis and your iPhone 13, so you can expect games. Choosing apps, scrolling around will definitely notice an upgrade in speed and smoothness. I definitely noticed it and it's up to par with the responsiveness of newer Apple products like the iPads and the MacBook Air. You open up the apps and boom, it's ready to go. The CPU for gaming will also get a nice boost up to 50% with this A15 chip. A very nice addition to the Apple TV hardware. For picture quality, HDR10 Plus is the new codec on the block and this new Apple TV handles it with ease as well as Dolby surround sound in Dolby Atmos 7.1 and 5.1. So you connect this up to your hi-fi through an HDMI cable, and this is now even more of a home theater powerhouse. HDMI 2.1 has been included in this, so you might need to update your older HDMI cables. If you can run everything in Dolby, it is definitely a superior viewing experience. Siri is equipped on here again, so it is as easy as asking the remote to play what you want, and now the positioning of Siri will be a little more discreet in the corner now, and a lot of widgets will be available for you to customize the visual on your screen. This newer remote also comes equipped with a USB-C port, so no more lightning ports, so just make sure you've got one of those newer charging blocks and a USB-C cord to go with it. Game controller support is now available for the Nintendo Joy-Cons and the Nintendo Pro Controller, so you can step up your arcade experience. And there is also a new feature and framework called Matter. We should be getting a lot more support for other non-Apple smart home devices like the Philips Hue and Nanoleaf bulbs. SharePlay is also available, similar to the HomePod Mini. You can start a FaceTime chat on your phone, you bring it up close to the Apple TV, and this type of handoff occurs where your FaceTime will now show up on the TV and you're still using your iPhone camera. Setting up the new Apple TV was super easy and you use your phone to link up your iCloud account and get you online. There's also a really cool feature where you use your smartphone to set up the correct color temperature on your television. It works really well. HomeKit compatibility is also available on the new Apple TV and I was easily able to tap into my HomePod mini in the other room, my AirPods, any device that was around. So just tons of other stuff that you can do if you have the right accessories and a continuation of Apple just trying to connect the dots throughout its ecosystem. So a solid release from Apple, and if you were wanting to get an Apple TV, this is the perfect one to start with. It's cheaper, better, and faster. If you are still rocking last year's model and wondering if you need to upgrade, I don't really feel like this is worth dropping another 130, 150 bucks since the new operating system works on previous models, and you get a nice little facelift in the menu system and those new Siri commands up in the corner. But if you have another TV in the bedroom that could use some Apple TV vibes, then this lower price point is very intriguing and could be a great gift for the upcoming holiday seasons. So I hope this video helped you out. Thank you so much for watching. And if you could hit that subscribe button, I would appreciate it so much. See you at the next one. Take care.